In this video, I will create and deploy the app server configuration. The app server will host a small Python application that connects to the database server to read a quote from the database and of course display it. As with the other roles, the first step is to create the necessary folder structure and the required main.yml. This time I'm going to also create the handlers and the files folder right from the start as I'm sure going to need them. The first action that goes into the main.yml is installing the software packages the application will need. In this case, that is Goonicorn, Supervisor and some Python modules the application uses. Goonicon is a small server for running Python web applications. Supervisor is a process management tool. With it you can run simple applications like Goonicon or any Python script as service. This way I can run the sample application even while not being logged into the server. Supervisor itself is also a service. On Ubuntu such services will automatically be started when the according package is installed. Unfortunately, this isn't the case for Supervisor, so I have to tell Ansible to start the service right now and to make sure it gets started on every system boot. The first is achieved by setting the state parameter to started and the latter is done by setting the enable parameter to yes. Now in order to actually have the application on the app server I have to create a folder for it and copy the application file over. If I'm ever going to update the application's file, I want Ansible to restart the application automatically. So I add a handler to the copy action. This will also start the application with the initial deployment. The next step is to copy over the configuration file for Supervisor. I'm using the template module as the config file will contain data that needs to be filled dynamically. As Supervisor doesn't notice changes in the configuration files by default, I have to make it reread the configuration file on every change. I again use a handler for this. It is also quite likely that I have to restart the application when the Supervisor config changes. So I add that handler here too. Ok, now let me copy over the test app code to the appropriate folder and show it to you. As you can see the application is rather simple, but there are two values you need to see. 
The application uses DB server as hostname and the environment value database password to connect to its database. So I have to provide the password and make sure that DB server can be resolved to the database server's IP address. Let's start with the database server's password. I'm letting supervisor provide this value via its config file. But I don't want to just write it down into the file. Instead, I'm going to use the password lookup of Ansible. The lookup is a special function that can be used with Ansible actions and templates. It is given the path to a text file on the control machine and whatever is written inside this text file will be used as password by Ansible. If the file doesn't exist, however, Ansible will create a random password and store it in the text file. This way you can generate passwords automatically. The next step is to make sure that a DB server is resolvable. As I don't have a working DNS for this name, I'm going to add the IP address and name to the etc hosts file. Therefore, I'm making use of the line in file module of Ansible. As the name suggests, the module makes sure that a given line is inside a given file. Again, I'm using a lookup to dynamically add the DB server's IP address. Now I have to provide the handlers that are mentioned in the tasks file. The reread handler just uses the shell module to call supervisor CTL and have it reread the configuration. The restart handler uses the supervisor module to restart the test application. Finally, I can add the role to the playbook and run Ansible Playbook. The Ansible playbook run doesn't show it, but Ansible did create a password for the lookup and store it as you can see here. Let's see the result. If everything worked, I should get a response from the application telling me that the database is still offline. Looks good so far. In the next video, I'm going to set up the database.